Greetings, I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo, Hobo Technos, Technos product review. The brand AmperTime, now rebranded to LiTime, has released a new physically smaller 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate drop in battery called the Mini that can fit into a lot more places than the standard Group 27 battery. It still has the standard 100 amp smart BMS and weighs only 19 pounds. But is it any good? Let's find out. Inside the 12 volt 100 amp hour mini are lithium iron phosphate cells rated at 4,000 cycles to 80% capacity. Now this is at 100% depth of discharge, which means fully discharging and recharging the battery 4,000 times. Now on their website, they do list longer life cycles for partial discharges, so don't let that confuse you. As for size and weight, it's only 10 by five by nine inches and weighs only 19 pounds. And to put this into perspective of just how small this is, I have the regular 100 amp hour battery right behind it. Side to side, you can see it's much thinner and length to length, you can see it's quite a bit shorter, but it's still the same height. As for the BMS, it's a 100 amp BMS, both charge and discharge rate, and is rated to handle up to five seconds at 250 amp discharge. As for series and parallel ability, the Mini supports up to four batteries in series for 48 volts, and then up to four of those in parallel for a total of 16 batteries in a series parallel configuration, good for 20 kilowatt hours of power. As for the quality, it is all ABS plastic all the way around. It is completely sealed and IP65 water resistant. So you can leave it out in the weather with no worries about it getting damaged. As for hot and cold protection, the Mini does offer high temperature protection, but does not offer low temperature protection. So you don't want to charge this thing if the internal cell temperature is below freezing. As for what comes in the box, you of course get the battery. It does come with a set of metric hardware. These are screw in bolts. It does come with these cool little plastic caps, which prevent prevent a short circuit if you accidentally drop something metal like a wrench or something on top of the battery. It does come with an easily removable nylon handle and some pretty cool color documentation. It does come with a very good color product manual, very easy to read. Um, does come with a bunch of other stuff in here, additional instructions on how to mount it safely, stuff like that. So they don't chance on the documentation. And as for the warranty, Lifetime, just like AmberTime, offers a five-year manufacturer's warranty on their products. And of course, I took the Lifetime 100 amp hour mini into my secret laboratory here where I performed all kinds of crazy experiments on it, including, yes, a single-fisted battery capacity test. As for the results of the battery capacity test, it's only single fisted, of course, because there is no inverter on a battery. It did score 102 amp hours. Now I know it's very difficult to see it in the time lapse. I have to say I'm pretty disappointed with my brand new, completely overpriced GoPro 11 Black, which did that time lapse. It seems like it has a problem with the 60 Hertz flickering in the lights in the room and, the, and on the battery monitor. So, it became almost impossible to read that gauge. It did say 102 amp hours. I can go ahead and zoom in on that kind of freeze frame and give you an idea. It did say 102 right before it shut off. So yeah, I think in the future, I might go back to my old GoPro 7 to do these time lapses. BMS charge rate test. Now I know this looks like the fuse box from a classic Jaguar, but it actually makes sense. So what I have first is my new Sun Gold Power 4000 watt 12 volt inverter charger. This can output 120 amps. It's one of the most powerful 12 volt chargers on the market. Also, I have back here my old school 10 amp charger, which is variable voltage. I also have my variable voltage 20 amp charger right here. So combined, I can do 150 amps at 12 volts. And I have this on separate circuits, so hopefully we won't 
lose any light during this test. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to crank this thing all the way up. It should max out around 145 amps charging because there is some loss to heat. So I'm just going to probably let it run for 15 minutes and see, will it accept 145 amps? Now remember, this is a 100 amp BMS. Will the BMS cut you off or is this going to let you keep charging at almost 50% over its rated capacity. So we're gonna go ahead and monitor the load here on this Victron battery monitor. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer once we're rolling here. You can probably see right there, it says 145 amps. I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer. And we'll come back in like 15 minutes and see if this thing's still running. Now, if it shuts off before, then I'll stop the timer and turn the camera back on. All right, we're back. We're coming up on the 15 minute mark where this thing has been charging at over 140 amps. Actually, the charge rate's starting to slow down a little bit because we're topping up the battery at this point. But we were running 145 amps for pretty much 12, 13 straight minutes. It did not fault, it did not conk out, it did not shut off the battery. So let's go ahead and check the temperature of the battery. I noticed a couple of warm spots on it. Now I notice there's a hot spot here on the battery. All right, so we do have a hot spot right there. It's 132 Fahrenheit, which is, that's that's a little too high. The top of the battery's fine. It's, it's in the 80 degree range. The sides are also the same. 80, 90 degree range. I'd already tested the back. I know similar results. Terminals are a little, a little warm, 114 degrees, but that's expected. I think where the, the, the major heat spot is here is probably where the BMS is. So yeah, it's definitely a little warm and it definitely let me charge it way too long at 145 amps. Now here's the thing, most of the time, you're not gonna have a charger like this on a single battery. You're gonna have a bank of these. You're gonna have two, three, four in parallel, probably, and maybe even some in series. They make these in 24 and 48 volts as well. But this is one of the most powerful 12 volt battery charger inverters out there and that allows allows me to really push this battery really hard and you're really not supposed to do that anyway. They tell you in the book that 20 amps is the recommended charge rate. So the fact that I'm pushing in over 140 isn't really good for the battery long term. You wouldn't want to do this every single day. You know, if you're discharging the battery, you're not going to want to get one of these put one battery on and crank the crap out of it because you will end up either burning out the BMS or something's going to happen if you keep going past that 100 amp limit. So this charger here, this is made for bigger batteries. If you have a two or three or 400 amp hour or several of these in parallel, then this is fine. Even if you put two batteries in parallel, it's gonna limit it to 60 amps each and almost all these batteries can charge at 50 to 60 amps. Even the cheapest, junkiest ones out there allow you to charge at 50 amps. So not really an issue there. So anyway, that's the results of the charging test. A few moments later. So of course, the moment that I turn the camera off and start shutting down for the night, the BMS shuts off. It is now refusing to charge the battery over 100 amps. In fact, now it completely shut off charging entirely. The inverter was beeping and then the rate of charge would go all the way down to zero, then it'd go back up to like 120 and then back to zero. So. Once it gets hot enough, it does actually shut down charging. So the safety mechanism's working, it's just a little on the slow side. So it looks like the safety's there and it is built in. And these cables are definitely getting a little warm. The battery's warm, everything's giving off a lot of heat here. So, but it is not allowing me to charge the battery anymore until it cools down. So that's a thumbs up for the safety. All right, we have one last test to do. This is the discharge rate test. So we're gonna find out how much power can we pull from this battery. Now it does have a 100 amp BMS, which means you can discharge 100 amps or 1280 watts. Now that's constant. It does say here in the manual that you can discharge up to 250 amps for five seconds, and that's safely. Now it's probably gonna allow us to do a little bit more than that, but that's why we need to test it and find out just how much more and just for how much longer. I'm gonna go ahead and run a load on the floor at varying levels until we get the thing to shut off. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and start right around 90 amps and raise it from there. Okay, we're at 113 amps. We're just gonna keep going by increments of 200 watts. Okay, we're at 135 amps, 160 amps, 170 amps, 250, 275, 350, and there we go. It did shut down at 350. So next what we're gonna do is go ahead and sit it at 250 amps and see how long can it actually take 250 amps. According to the manual, it says five seconds. I have a feeling we'll get it quite a bit longer than that, but let's find out. 
All right, we're at 250 amps, approximately. And we're gonna see how long it'll go before it shuts down. And there we have it. Just over a minute, it shut down. Okay, let's repeat the test at 200 amps and see how long it'll go. All right, we made it 30 seconds that time. Obviously, the battery is getting hot. Now, there's one obvious downside to having the same amount of power in a smaller box, and that is overheating. So, if you actually do run this thing into the 250, 350 amp range, for any period of time, it's gonna overheat and shut down. Right now, I'm waiting several minutes now for this thing to cool down so that I can power it back up and continue my testing. Just be aware that when you buy a smaller battery in a plastic sealed box that is weather resistant, it's gonna take longer to cool down than it would a big box that has a lot of empty space in it. So we're gonna continue to wait here for a couple more minutes and continue on with the testing. We're gonna do 150 amps next, sustain, and see how long it'll take it. Now do be aware that this battery is getting hotter and hotter as I test it. So I always start with the highest limit and work my way down. It should get to the point where I can run this 100 amps continuously without it shutting down. So, all right, after five minutes or what seemed like an eternity, the battery turned itself back on and it is ready for our next test. Now, I do wanna ask you guys while you're watching this video, does it matter if I chop the top off this battery and show you what's inside. Does that make or break your purchasing decision? Because I did a poll on this a few months ago and I get overwhelming responses. Basically, you cut the top off, they're no longer waterproof, you can you know, get dust and dirt, and drop things in there. Yeah, I guess you can duct tape the top back on, but then the battery becomes useless for anybody else. I have no use for these batteries around here. I have so many batteries, it's ridiculous, so I don't even need these things. I like to repurpose my batteries. I like to give them to people that need them. So this last year at Quartzsite, I brought some solar generators and batteries and solar panels to camp and I handed them out to people that needed them. So a battery like this is probably gonna get donated somewhere or I can chop it up for more views. I'm leaving that up to you guys. So leave me a comment below, and if you won't buy this battery because I won't chop the top off of it, let me know in the description. I just wanna know, do I really need to take the time and effort to chop the tops off of batteries if it means more people are gonna like the video? Okay, here we are at 150 amps. We started our timer. Let's see how long we can run this before it shuts down. Do note I did let the battery cool down for about five minutes. Okay, we're back and after six and a half minutes at 150 amps, it finally did shut down. So what do I think about the Lifetime 100 amp hour mini? Well, it's another 100 amp hour battery. What else can I say about it? I do like the smaller and lighter form factor. It does make sense to squeeze more power into smaller spaces. It performs as it should. It does allow too much power going through the BMS, but it does overheat and shut down when it needs to. So it is safe. It's not gonna burn your van or RV down. However, I'm still disappointed. It's 2023, people. Why can we not have low temperature protection built into these batteries? It's a simple circuit. It's identical to the high temperature protection, but you just turn down the temperature and shut the battery battery off. I don't understand why these companies are still coming out with new models that don't have low temperature cutoff. I guess they just wish to have a lot of warranty returns because what people do and they don't realize they put these in an outdoor situation where it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit and they charge it and it ruins the battery and then they go oh the capacity is gone the thing's a piece of crap and they send it back and get another one because a five-year warranty is a five-year warranty, isn't it? So hopefully these companies are gonna to start to learn and start putting low temperature protection in just to save themselves some money. Now, there are a few simple ways to get around this low temperature cutoff. First of all, you can get a really nice high-end MPPT solar controller. Some of them do have temperature sensors in them. You can program them to say cut off at like 38 degrees, so it won't charge below that. Like all my Victrons, for example, have this feature built in. So if you're willing to pay the money for a good solar controller, it will protect your batteries. Another way is just to use them and keep them in an insulated space. Just because the battery is like in an RV battery tray, you put some foam in there, keep the batteries heat to themselves because they do generate heat when you use them. So as you're using your appliances and your 12 volt and stuff in your RV trailer or cabin or wherever you're using it, these are completely sealed batteries. They don't vent any kind of gas. You can put them inside, say, a styrofoam cooler from Walmart that's like 10 bucks 
and it will stay warm by its own heat and stay above freezing and then you really don't have to worry about it unless it really, really drops like low below zero. And most of the times you're charging during the day anyway, you're not gonna be charging at three or four o'clock in the morning and you know, when it's the coldest out. So what about the competition? Well, this mini market is a new niche. So there's really not a lot of competition at this time. Now I'm hoping this trend's gonna continue to the larger battery sizes like they're two, three and 400 amp hours. Cause I think the first to squeeze 200 amp hours into the space of a normal car battery is gonna be a big winner. Those are gonna sell big time. Now me personally, I'm hoping they're gonna shrink those three and 400 amp hour batteries so I can fit more of them in my RV. Okay, so what about use case? I might sound like a broken record to some of you, but these drop-in lithium batteries are not designed as car starter batteries. You can use them for small trolling motors and other loads under 100 amps. The recommended inverter size for a single 100 amp hour mini is 1500 watts, and of course you can use a larger inverter than that. Just remember the larger the inverter size, the more power you're gonna waste to heat during standby times. And if you need more than 1500 watts of power, simply add more batteries. Just by paralleling two of these together, you can run about 2500 watts on an inverter, and I'd suggest just getting a 3000 watt inverter to give you a little headspace in case you wanna start like a refrigerator or something like that off of it that needs a little extra power. Now, if you're inverter shopping, I do highly recommend those Sun Gold Power inverters, the one I showed earlier in the video. I also like Renogy brand inverters, I use both. And I do have those on my product page at hobotech.tv under inverters. Now, what about charging? It is a total myth that you need a special lithium style charger to charge these batteries. These batteries have their own brains in them. As long as you supply 14.4 to 14.6 volts DC, it's gonna charge the battery all the way full. You don't need a special charger or a special lithium controller. Of course, those are nice because if you kill the battery completely, it'll automatically pump the power back in and start it back up. Otherwise, you gotta manually jump start it yourself with another 12 volt battery or 12 volt source. I have an entire video on how to jump one of these batteries if it dies on you, so. Check that out if you ever get one of these drop-in batteries and all of a sudden nothing comes out of it. I'll show you how to start it back up. Product price. Now the regular price for the Lifetime 100 amp hour mini is 369, but of course Hobotech viewers won't pay that as I scored an exclusive discount that will knock a few bucks off for a limited time. Now, during Lifetime's Memorial Day sale, they do offer veterans and current military service people an additional 8% off their batteries. So make sure you score that while they got their Memorial Day sale going. So if you're interested in the Lifetime 100 amp hour mini, the link of course is gonna be in the description of this video below. I'm gonna also put a link here at the bottom of the screen that you can type in manually along with a QR code that you can scan on a mobile device. It'll take you on over to the Lifetime store page where you can check out the 100 amp hour mini. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me that thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. If you're interested in the lie time 100 amp hour, oops. RV Golf Guy, Brian Blue, Bruce Johnson, Jason Soroka, Mark Steve Eisenberg.